Hey guys, before we get started, I just wanted to say I have been live pretty regularly on Twitch doing some shiny hunting, raids and sword and shield, and is overall playing the games a lot. So if you guys want to interact with me live, go follow me on there and have notifications on when I'm live, that way you don't miss me. Thanks guys, enjoy the video. Pokemon Sword and Shield has quite the list of Pokemon, going from small to big, and of course weak to strong. Either way, in my honest opinion, I think Pokemon Sword and Shield has introduced us with some of the best mons ever created, especially in the strong sense. Some of these new Pokemon have absolutely busted stats, brand new moves, new abilities, and a plethora of other reasonings. I'm just saying, Generation 8 has introduced us with some of the strongest Pokemon I think we've ever seen. That's why today, I wanted to count down the top 10 strongest Pokemon in Sword and Shield. These are the mons that in my opinion are going to be some of the most powerful assets to players' teams. I also think that these Pokemon are going to be the most impactful in changing the Sword and Shield metagame, no matter what side you play. But enough of my speech hyping these guys up. Let's show them off and get started with this list. Now Hatterin looks fantastic stats wise, on paper, and performs as well as the stats show. Hatterin is one of those cases where you can judge it by stats alone. Its defensive and offensive powers are absolutely nutty. 136 special attack, 90 attack, 103 special defense, 95 defense. This is the definition of a true tank. Some of you may be going, boy, about speed. If you guys have dabbled with Hatterin before, then you should all know that Hatterin thrives with that kind of slow speed. Have you ever heard of a move called Trick Room? The Pokemon with the slowest speed moves first when Trick Room is active. With that base 29 speed, Hatterin is going to be taking full advantage of that, doing super well revolving around a Trick Room team. Trick Room equipped with setup moves like Calm Mind and Great Coverage can shred through teams left and right. I would honestly call Hatterin the Trick Room queen at this point. One more little tidbit I want to throw out there is its hidden ability, Magic Bounce. People try to stall off Toxic and will get their attack bounce back at them with Magic Bounce. So Hatterin the Trick Room queen can show her nobility with these deadly traits and really impact the meta. I'm really excited to talk about this next slot because my favorite Galar starter, Cinderace, made this list. There are so many incredible aspects I can say about Cinderace. One, it's the best designed starter in Galar. Two, its stats are incredible being 119 base speed and 116 base attack. Three, its move pull looks fun. I can see a lot of fun moves like Iron Head, Gunk Shot, U-Turn for Pivot, and Acrobatics for that destructive power. So stats and moves look fun and dandy. We have our typical fast hitting Pokemon. Cool stuff. We're barely touching the tip of the iceberg though. There are more features of Cinderace that make it greater. For starters, it's got a signature attack called Pyro Ball, which has 120 power with only a 90% chance to miss. No recharge or anything like that. Plus, it also has the chance to burn, so that just adds to it. Another gimmicky attack it has is Court Change. Court Change essentially allows you to do exactly what the move entails. An opponent sets up Stealth Rocks, Spikes, Toxic Spikes, etc. Court Change can throw that back. It's gimmicky, but can be used well in conjunction with the Heavy Boots too. The Heavy Boots make it so Cinderace doesn't take damage to Rocks and Spikes. The final part to why Cinderace is crazy strong is because of its ability Libero. It's just protein, but with a name change. It's Gen 8's Greninja. That's why Cinderace is on this list. Rising from the ocean, we have the Speed Torpedo of the Rain, the Dynamax King of the Ocean, Barrascuta. With an amazing attack set of 123 and speed of 136, this torpedo moves almost at the speed of sound when the rain is up, thanks to its ability Swift Swim. Slap on close combat and Dynamax this bad boy to unleash the Max Knuckle, which increases its attack by one stage. Give him liquidation for rain and with Max Geyser and Aqua Jet if you want to out-prioritize the other Pokemon who might try to outphase this fish. It also has access to Crunch and Second Fangs for coverage. You can rest assured that this fish will swim all the way to victory as part of your team. Though I'm not a big fan of the design, it is pretty good in the competitive sense. Self-Sitting Rain, the Turbo Boost past any and all Pokemon, not to mention its hidden ability, which ignores Storm Drain, so you can safely click those water moves, is pretty freaking insane. In the random grass route of Route 10, we find a frozen fellow who evolves into the most intimidating frozen gorilla of all time. Glorian Dormanitan is such a huge threat with ice typing, being one of the best offensive typings in the game, and with its ability, Gorilla Tactics, it's like Dormanitan has the chance to hold two choice bands at the same time. Pair that up with the base 140 attack stat and 95 speed, and you have an ice type nuke. Dormanitan, unlike Kirin Black, is also capable of using Icicle Crash, a base 85 physical move. But if that isn't your taste and you feel adventurous, you can finally run a good Zen Mode Darmanitan. When Glorian Darmanitan reaches Zen Mode, it becomes both Fire and Ice type, with 160 attack and 135 speed. A dangerous threat with both Icicle Crash and Flare Bloods. Add on Earthquake and U-Turn to get quickly out of there. That's a solid Pokemon right there.
Corvenant's typing of Steel Flying, an increased HP stat, makes it arguably an upgrade on Skarmory with its unique ability of Mirror Armor, reflecting back relevant stat drops. The ability of Dynamax with access to Max Airstream, which increases speed, Max Knuckle, which increases attack, allows for Bulk Up Corvenant to be a potential sweeper, filling its moves with Brave Bird, Body Press, which uses its defense to attack the opponent, boosted by Bulk Up and its 1 5 defense stat, makes its Bird Pack quite a punch. You'll have yourself a dangerous Dynamax threat in the field. Its defensive typing further allows more bulkier defog variants of the U-turn. It also possesses ability to speed control with access to Tailwind. Corviknight might just be the best starter bird we've ever had. Just making it into the top 5, we have the Water Dragon Fossil Pokemon, Dracovish. This monster fossil fish with access to Strongjaw is one of the most ridiculous Pokemon I've seen in all 20 years of Pokemon. If Dracovish gets to move before its opponent, its signature move, Ficious Rend, will do double damage. From my base 85 power physical boosted by Strongjaw and the potential to be boosted Rain, I went ahead and did some damage calcs. A max attack adamant Dracovish with a choice span in Rain can Oko a max HP, no defense Toxapex, and a max HP, no 24 defense Ferrothorn. Those are two of the bulkiest you commonly see, and Dracovish can kill them both in one move. That is insane. On top of that one ridiculous move, Dracovish also gets access to Crunch, Ice Fang, and Psychic Fangs for options of Strong Jaw, though Ice Fang is probably not necessary. Instead, you can have Low Kick, which by Dynamaxi makes it Max Knuckle, which boosts your attack step by one, so you don't need the Choice Band. If you need yourself a Wall Breaker, you have it right here. Pair it up with a Tailwind user, and you'll have yourself a Nuke for two turns or three if you're playing doubles. If I were to make a video ranking all the pseudo legendaries from weakest to strongest, without a doubt in my mind, a Dragapult will be the strongest one. Look at these stats 142 base speed with 120 base physical attack and 100 base special attack. You can choose to run a mixed attacker on Dragapult and choose to run whatever you want with it. I chose to run mine as a physical attacker of Dragon Dance as its buffer. I chose to run it with Dragon Dance, Dragon Darts, Phantom Force, and U Turn. I'm thinking of changing Phantom Force for Shadow Ball, but I'm not too sure. Phantom Force is kind of iffy because of the whole two turn aspect, but it's still fairly powerful, being able to just pop behind your opponent and just get him when they least expect it. I will have you guys write the set. In my opinion, you can either run one of its three abilities. I personally like Infiltrator because it can go through Substitute and Screens. Screens are a big part of the meta right now, especially with Grimmsnarl and Duraludon. The other two actually are pretty handy though, so it just comes down to preference. I'm not going to explain any more about Dragapult though. I will just let it speak for itself. Going into the final three of this, we have the first legendary Pokemon and Sword Shield on this list being Eternatus. Now, Eternatus is this high because it is a legendary with legendary stats. Eternatus barely beats Dragapult because of that special attack stat being at 145. The move pull is a bit predictable, but that doesn't mean it's horrible. It's got the right moves for the coverage it needs, and the coverage also goes along with its special attack stat as well. It's also tanky too, having very high HP and decent defenses all around. It's just your typical generational legendary, but it's great. The typing is also cool to see, and Dragalge isn't the only poison dragon type anymore. Zamazenta is the second best Pokemon in Sword and Shield hands down. You would think it's first with these great stats, typing combo and fun moves, but there's one more above. Based on stats alone, Zamazenta is a fast swiftly tank being at 128 speed, 145 in both defenses, and a great attack stat at 130. It's got a lot of power attacks to go along with those stats as well. If I were to use a moveset, it would probably be something like this. Behemoth Bash, Close Combat, Psychic Fangs, play rough. I got nothing else to really say about Zamazenta, it's just legendary, the stats are legendary, it's amazing. Before we reveal the number one slot, we should take a moment for some honorable mentions. For this slot, we have Duraludon and Toxtricity. Duraludon has an incredible typing in Steel and Dragon, which we haven't seen since Dialga, and we all know how great Dialga was. Sure, Duraludon isn't a box legendary like Dialga, but the point still stands. With a rather good stat line of 70 HP, 95 attack, 115 defense, 120 special attack, 50 special defense, and 85 speed, it only fell a bit short due to the other options simply being stronger. But do not underestimate Duraludon. Steel Beam, Draco Meteor, Flash Cane, or the physical variant featuring Swords Dance and Iron Head. As for Toxtricity, a unique typing in Poison and Electric. Let's watch out for those Earthquakes. Toxtricity has a new ability called Punk Rock, which increases damage on all sound moves from this Pokemon, like its signature move Overdrive, or some moves like Boom Burst and even Snarl. You can run him with Overdrive, Boom Burst, Sludge Wave for Stab, and Shift Gear for Speed Increase. There aren't many Pokemon who can safely switch in on him. Give him a Throat Spray at him, and watch its special attack shoot up to plus one when a sound-based move is used. Alright, those are the honorable mentions. Now let's move on to number one. 
And finally, at number one, we crown Zacian, the king of the Galar decks. With its unique typing of physical fairy type in base form, and when crowned, it becomes fairy steel. That's a pretty cool typing. With its ability Intrepid Sword, giving an attack raise and crown Zacian's base 170 attack and 148 speed stat. It has become one of the most offensive Pokemon to exist. It also has access to fairy and fighting coverage, making it a prominent sweeper of Swords Dance. Zacian's stats are absolutely ridiculous, and its signature move Behemoth Blade, which deals double damage to Dynamax Pokemon. This legendary has most certainly earned its title by being the strongest Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Well, that wraps up my top 10 strongest Pokemon in Sword and Shield. Some of these Pokemon are just totally busted and deserve their spot here on this list. I don't think it can really be debated which Mons are stronger than the ones I have here. If you disagree though, throw the Pokemon you think should be on the list below. Regardless though, these Pokemon are awesome and you can't change my mind about that. I will still stand by what I said earlier. Sword and Shield are some of the best Mons we have gotten in a very, very long time. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my Twitch where I stream a lot of Pokemon content and all kinds of other Nintendo content like Zelda, Fire Emblem, and much more. Also, I've been reviewing every episode of My Hero Academia Season 4 over on Mystic Sage, so head over there if you're into that too. I would love that a lot. Want to support me further further in Game Call Perks? Check out my Patreon. Daniel Leone, Lady Crimson, Memory Martin, The Lazy Leo, Matthew Young, Awesome Lego, Jarrett Weas Austin, Sodden Grider, and Enigma97 did, and I want to thank them personally for going above and beyond. It means the world to me. I think I'm wrapped this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrand and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.